this is just a quick clip just to answer a, a question that Donald had about <clears throat> the wear that the steady rest had on the actual aluminum. Now the jaws I have in this uh, steady rest are cast iron, so obviously a lot harder than the aluminum. Preferably, um, if you were using the um, the plain jaws as this has, you want brass. But the original ones were cast iron, and that's what these were. Um, in the video, it did look like it was pulling off a lot of metal, but it's actually not. Right here, well, that little divot right there is actually just a surface imperfection in the aluminum itself. But if you run your finger this way across here, there, you don't feel any difference from this surface to this surface. Right here, there's a little, little ridge on this where of raised material. You can see kind of poking it up there. But I can feel that ridge both on this side going from this, this side here to this side and going from this side to this side. Now that was caused by my jaws placement itself. Um, when I took this jaw, this steady rest apart um, to clean and paint it, I had numbered the jaws. I had labeled the top jaw, but I forgot to label the side. So I had a 50-50 chance of putting them back in the same direction. Now basically what happens is, is you spin this way all the time, so you wear a divot in them. Um, you wear it, you take material off of this side and you raise it on the other side. So I basically have these two jaws the wrong way around. So I have the raised material on this side and there's a little nick in the tip of that jaw which actually gouged and made that. Now if I were to take, I don't have a micrometer big enough unfortunately. So a little dial calipers will have to suffice here but I got a uh, two six uh, seven two six seventeen and right in the middle of that where I have two six um, just over two six uh, 16 so it's about it's about a thousand uh, a little well less than a less than a thousand of um, of actual material that we lost in there so um, that's just to answer your question a little bit more uh, visually so um, let me finish up this uh, last handle and then I'll show you the setup of the actual saw itself all right we got um or I got the other knob all set here. Um, also, let me slide it around over here. There's the other knob fitted. Um, I also took um, a sanding disc in my grinder and just flattened out all the high spots on this so uh, when I loosen this I can slide it uh a lot freer and easier so i only have to loosen up a little bit so hopefully i won't lose my alignment if i ever have to move that but the where it is now it gives me um between these two actually between the um <clears throat> between this jaw and here is about uh four inches or so About four, four and an eighth, um, which honestly, I don't see me doing anything much bigger in this lathe round wise. If I have to cut a plate or anything that's a little bit wider, then I can move it around, but I think that's pretty much going to be the position that's going to be at most of the time. Now, um, the these guide wheels here. Get a good look at them. Now they have, they're on a cam. You can see, uh, or maybe you can't see. Let me go around to the other side. Well, that's a little better. These are on a cam. There's a, a set bolt on the back to tighten it down. And this is a, um, a hex. Um, spot behind here to put your wrench in, to be able to grab it and turn it. Now, let me show you.
unlike all other saws that I've seen, um, they usually have this wheel, this inside guide wheel, um, in a fixed position with the outside guide wheel on the cam to adjust to your blade. These are both on cams, as you can see from when I turn it, you can see it move in and out. So that presents a little bit of an issue because you don't know if this guide wheel is in line with the bottom guide wheel. So what I am going to do is I'm going to eyeball center on this roller here and the roller on the, on the, uh, the bottom down there and then take that hex that's behind this and have it level like this. So I can pretty much be assured that they're more or less in the same position. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if I eyeball, sorry if my head gets in the way, if I eyeball center on that pulley or that bearing there, or about there, and there's my level. Now same thing with the bottom one here. Now I know those two pulleys are, um, or keep calling them pulleys, they're not pulleys. Those two um, bearing wheels and saw guides are in the same place, roughly. So now I take a straight edge, and I take my straight edge, and open this up a little bit. There we go. Now, just clamp them in those guide wheels for the time being. I want to make sure that everything's tight because I'm going to show you. Let me. I'm going to show you why I'm doing that in a second. So let me move to a better position. Now comes the fun part. This bolt right here controls this whole um, head assembly right here with these two bearings. Uh, the other bolts right here also controls this. Now that controls your swing uh, this way, your, 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 the tilt of your blade. Now you can see we're off here because this one is further in than this. But here's the fun part. <clears throat> Not only do they tilt this way, they also go up and down. Um, so I want to get my actual level first vertically. I'll show you what you mean. I know there's going to be a couple of camera changes, angles around here, but it's just kind of crazy. Actually, I'm... all right, you can see right here. On this one, here's the bar, and here's the actual little head assembly. Here, it's real. It's level with. Um, this piece right here this corner is level with this corner and you can see the gap in the blade in the uh, ruler there now this one right here on the other hand you can see is further up and I'm going to see if I can get my camera down low enough for you to see you can kind of see if I can get some better light in there right here here's the edge of one piece Here's the edge of the other. So I want to loosen these and bring these both into level. Now what I'm, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to loosen this one and loosen the other one and stick my fish behind this blade and behind this and push them together. Now I do want a gap in there because this blade 
this ruler here is riding on that guide bearing under here and I don't want my saw blade to be rubbing up against the edge of this you can see here so if I push this all the way in in this touching here this is the back of my blade and I'll be rubbing that so let me grab my wrenches here get around the other side here loosen that up You can see how much movement there is in that back and forth. So, if I make sure these are nice and clamped tight, which they are, put this right here, should be able to pop those right together. Right there. And then tighten it down. So I have that gap in between my blade and the uh, back of this plate. Let me do the bottom one there too. Now I have my height set. Um, as you can see, we're still a little bit out on that um, in being in line with each other. So you need to do get some sort of scale and just measure from either this point here or this point here and basically make them even. This one is a pain in the ass to move. I'm a lot better off moving this one, so that's the one I'm going to move. You just have to be sure that when you turn it, that you're not loosening up enough that you're going to drop it and uh, skew your alignment vertically. Probably been off this way. Pretty much a quarter of an inch there. By the way, all these bolts are metric. This is uh, 14 millimeter. All right, that's pretty even. We can double check our squareness here. Real quick, here it is. Now we're pretty. We're pretty good. Pretty good there. Alright, so now I'm going to loop the blade through and then we'll adjust the tension on our uh, guide bearings. I uh, just want to show you a couple of the blades real quick. This is one, uh, a generic one, kind of crappy that I've had laying around for a while. Um, the original one that came with this machine, uh, I believe it was a 10 uh, tooth per inch. I, I snapped that one uh, pretty quick. This is uh, one I've had kicking around here for a while that I had on a, uh, a uh, regular bandsaw. This one right here is a really good bimetal one. It's uh, made by Lennox. This is um, 14 teeth per inch. And this is um, variable pitch. It has one inch of 14 teeth per inch, one inch of 12 teeth per inch. Um, and uh, like I said, this is... This, this one here is uh, a bimetal bit. You can see the quality of this blade is kind of sucky. You can actually see the weld joint right there. Um, this die master one you can't. Let me see if I can get a kind of a close up on what the teeth look like. 
see if you can see a difference. Might be hard to tell. But here you can see one row of the let me get something along the point. Right. <clears throat> right here you can see a row of the fourteen um teeth per inch in right here, starting right here. Move that back a little bit. You can see right there is the twelve teeth per inch. Um it, it, the blade works pretty good. I, I, I would like to have a slightly finer one, uh, maybe 14, 18, just for the smaller sizes that I do. Um, one of each size. That, that's all they happen to have in stock at Granger when I want to go buy one. Um, but we're going to loop this through and get it all tensioned up. Yeah, field of view on this camera kind of sucks. This is a happy medium here, so you can see most of what's going on. Obviously, the tension knob's up here. This pulley here can be uh, tilted in and out to adjust the way the actual um, blade rides on the pulleys themselves. So, this is the Lennox blade. We haven't done anything to these yet. They're still open enough to hold that 12-inch uh, that scale that I had. Sorry if the not being able to hear me with my back turned. Alrighty, we're looped on the pulleys, and we're in there. I'm gonna give us a nice, good tension here. Now, obviously, the bigger, better, better saws actually have a meter up top, a uh, tension meter. This, you're kind of just going by feel more than anything else, and sound. seems pretty good to me for now so we have all that set up and that everything is in there let's push as far back as it'll go it's as far back on the bottom pulley as it'll go let me zoom in here for you the teeth are just over the edge of the pulley here and down here the teeth are just over the edge of the pulley there too. So as it comes around you're not bending the wave out of it. Alrighty, let's focus in on those bottom wheels. We already set this one so all I have to do is bring this in to touch it. Now I don't want to crank it crazy tight and jam the wheel right up against it. I want to tighten it just till it straightens the blade. Same thing with the top here just till they touch. Now what I want to be able to do is rotate these wheels freely by hand. See how I can move that? I can move this one and do the same with the top. These are meant to guide the wheels, not pinch it, not restrict it, not move it to somewhere it doesn't need to be. It's just guiding. The more friction, the more pressure you put on this blade, the worse off you're going to be. So now, let's turn it on again. Should be able to grab this with my hand. Stop. Okay, grab this one. Stop. This, there's one in there. I can push and stop that one. I'll show you on the top. Alright, we're back up at the top guide wheels here. I just want to be able to show you what I mean by stopping them. Um, let me get some better light in here. There you go. You can see that much better. 
Now all I'm going to do is turn it on and by hand grab this and stop it. Obviously you don't want to stick your finger in the blade. This one here, just be very careful. You can stick your finger behind it and then hold it. This actually has to come out a little bit. Now, I'm going to keep the way it is. You can see that this isn't touching anything. I'm going to loosen up that screw and push it down just a hair without going side to side on it. There we go. Now we're touching that blade. Now we're definitely touching that blade. Tighten it back down. Alrighty. Now we turn it back on. Now you can see, Let's see if I can catch the bluing. what's left of the bluing is right there but you can see I can just push my finger on it and I can stop it same thing with this back one and still with the bottom ones to double check tension's good with that now our last check before we take a test cut is going to be to lower this whole thing down and uh, throw our square up against our blade itself and double check and make sure everything's good to go. Alright, we got it all set up. Um, just check squareness here. We look really good on the vertical. You double check our length out. I like that. We're pretty much even. Now, before I do replace the jaws, let's throw a small piece of aluminum in here. Give it a quick cut. See how thin we can get that. Now I got a piece of three-quarter inch aluminum in there. Uh, I faced it off in a lathe, so I have a vertical, um, <clears throat> oh, a perfectly flat surface rather. Um, I have it set for just about the curve of the blade. Let's we'll see if we can get a sliver out of that. Wobble in the blade is uh, the blade itself. I think that that's where, right where the weld joint is, where you see that little curve. That tick is the um, the lower guard of the uh, the bottom pulley. I didn't tighten the knob. It's it's knocking and hitting. That, that that's all that tick is.
figure out where that piece went, and then we'll measure it. All right, this is the piece that we just cut. Um, this is the end that we just cut. Here's the the end of that um, the end of the cut itself. That little burr. Um, let's get it aimed up at the light here a little bit and see if we can. It's going to be kind of pain in the butt to do, but now <clears throat> here's the burr on this side, right here. So the saw was cutting this way through it, so I'm going to see if there's any deviation this way. Um, we should be able, if there's any deviation, we should be able to see the light through there, which we really don't. I mean, you got a little bit, but that's from the curve of the saw itself. And then, with the blade itself, you got pretty much nothing. Now, this is the disc that we took off, which is also pretty consistent. A little bit of a bend to it, that's when it flung off. Let's see what the diameter of it is, or the thickness of it is. Eighteen thousands, and go to the other complete opposite side here. And there is a little bit of a bend to this too, so. One eighty or eighteen rather seventeen and a half and the last corner here, which is right where the bend is too. Nineteen, that's right where the bend is though, so I'm probably reading a lot of that. But you know, within a within a couple of thousands or so, you know, uh, that, that ain't bad at all. I go for that. I mean, it was only, a, I think I paid 100 and, 180 $190 for the saw. I'm happy with that. And the only other thing I'm going to do to the saw is um, put the jaws on, uh, the, the make the new jaws out of the angle iron and put the jack screw and everything in, which will probably be another quick video. It won't be as long as this one. Um, I just, I, I don't want to add it to the end of this and make this uh, section too long for you guys. And this actually might be the uh, the last project with this camera. Um, I'm looking around for a new one. So hopefully I can find one in my price range that works out pretty good. And uh, we can get some better uh, image quality and um, maybe some high definition and uh, just better focal length. I mean, I, it's kind of hard getting the whole project in with this camera. So um, hopefully we can come up with something better and we'll see how that goes.